Okay, to get started for this tutorial, I have my Arches 100% Cotton Cold Pressed Paper. I have my new palette here. Um, I've mixed up a couple colors already. I have a blush color here, a sap green mixed a little brown. I have some hookers mixed with some indigo, some indigo with some turquoise. But the um, blush color, it mixed rose with some yellow. Um, then I have my browns and I have a crimson over here I mixed with some browns. And I have my paper towel. And I think I'll start with my Crumbacker number 10 brush. There's no drawing tutorial for this because it's roses and it's, you can, I, don't, I don't really draw them out. I just paint them out. So I can't, I can't give you a drawing tutorial. I can only show you what I do. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Grab water on my brush. I'm going to grab some of this darker, deep, it's crimson mixed with a little brown. And I always start in the middle, just little lines here. Okay, zoom in a little better than that. And you're kind of like going around. I showed you a couple tutorials of this already. Grab some of this paint again. Just make these little lines going around like this. And then I go and clean my brush. <coughs> Excuse me. And I grab some of this blush color on the brush on the belly here. And I'm pushing down. I'm leaving sp white spaces. As you can see. White spaces. Just making the petals like you would see in a rose, but leaving white spaces in between. Kind of just have to feel for it for this blush tutorial. I didn't do the one when you put the water next to it and bleed it out because I don't want to do that today. A little slightly more realistic kind of look. Might go in and add some of this deeper color in here. Some up over here. I'm pushing it. See, I'm pushing it with my brush. Adding it and pushing it. I do want to make that real light. Just get, like I said, you get the water and you wash it off. Wash off your brush. Go back in with just water on it and just kind of hit the edge of it. But I feel like that's too loose. It's too light. So I'm going back in and adding the color. And that's a fairly faint blush color. But see, I still have a lot of white in between. This particular rose is how I want to do it. And I'm building the color. So even though it's a pale blush color, you still need different values because it's it's gonna have shade and shadow. And to me it's kind of looking too cookie cutterish uniform. Gonna have to build it out a little bit crazier so it looks like it's natural not some perfect little rose that's a big rose and then for the one up here I do like a half rose kind of like a peony shape so let me put some back out take the same color the rose mixed with some yellow. That's a little too bright. All right, rose mixed with some yellow. Get that blush color. Sorry, I'm just trying to mix up more color because I used it all. <laughs> and this one, gonna make the petals go like this. Let's see this. Is it not a little more? Again, this is gonna be more loose but 
a little structured. And then we're going to put the outside petals back here. You're going to leave a space, a white space in here. Because we're going to be adding some stamens. So it's kind of like a, a U shape with the V. And then for the petals on the bottom, they fold out. So building this rose is opened up. But it's like sideways. I'm going to go in and some, add some darker tones of this blush. It gets a little tricky. You have to, um, it comes to a little too bright, so you might have to add a little um, burnt umber or umber brown to it. So it's blush, but it's not bright. Neoni. It's a little wet, so it's kind of wet on wet right here, this section. I'm going to let it dry a little bit because I don't want it wet on wet too much. I'm going to add another rose. here. Again, same premise. You're just making these lines. Pushing out with the brush. Push down, push out. This one's going to be a little bit looser than the last two. As you can see. Now I'm going to start adding in some leaves. Now I've mixed this color, I told you. It's the hooker's green with some indigo. It's like a blue green, fairly dark. I'm going to put this under my blush roses. The contrast of the dark green with the blush. Is great. A little disclaimer, I did draw a jar right here and basically it's just a jar. You can just draw, you know, cylinder shape. It's kind of curved up here. So I did draw something but I'm not going to show you that because you don't need that. So I just did basically a couple of lines and a line over here. It's the same thing with this one. I'm just adding in some leaves, some fallen leaves this way. Get a little darker here, some more over here. And the edges could be soft, smooth, or a little rough. You know, roses have those jagged edges. You can don't have to have it that way. You can have it so however you want it. It can be rough or smooth. I'm going to go ahead and add some even darker tones, which means I'll add some more indigo right on the edge here. See that? Play around with that. I'll clean up my brush. I'm going to add the sap green kind of color. I want to change up the color tones a little bit. And adding in some branches here. Whoops, that bled. Just moved my finger to pull that out. Or paper towel because it got dirty. 
adding some leaves just by pushing down and pulling up with this brush. Same thing like that, see that? It's very simple. Cleaning up my brush. I'm gonna go add some stems in here. So even though it's a water jar, I'm gonna show the stems. So I've got my hooker's green. I'll add a little indigo. Oops, too much indigo. Go back to add the green. So it got a little too dark. That's okay. Okay, here we go. And I just go whoosh down with the stems. It's kind of how I do it. Feels a little more natural, I guess. I'm gonna be adding some up here. More of those darker leaves. Again, up here, you should add some of the darker tone leaves. Have them bend, curve around. Blanking the uh, pretty blush rose kind of pops it off the page. So you want to kind of try and do that. You're just playing with the dark and light of each other. You see how it pops out more when you get a dark tone next to each other. And here, add that dark jagged leaf. Cleaning up the brush, go back in, it's not wet anymore, and fix this rose. Add some more darker tones to her. Yes, it's a she. Just creating more interest in this rose. And then I would go in and add some of those little stamens that we talked about. It could be dark brown, a little black, or a little blue. Just go in and add those. Off your brush. Gonna go in and add some more of these darker leaves. And when they're hitting that blush rose, like I said, you can add some indigo. You can even add a little crimson if you want to. So it's starting to take shape. I'm gonna add a few more leaves around in here. to generate more interest before I start building out the jar. And then up here, I can just add some pretty little blush flowers besides roses. I mean, they, would, can be, they could be roses. To me, they're just gonna look like little blush flowers. Basically, it's like little dots. You can add a few more down here too. And add the stems to it afterwards. Take a little brown, burnt umber, go in here. Connect them so the brown's hitting it, but gives it that loose element. All right, I'm gonna go up to this rose and add some deeper tones like we've discussed before. Just 
just kind of on one side. And then this one, I'm going to add some more to the tepa tones also. And go back in here again. Okay, now I'm going to work on the jar. So I drew in this cylinder type jar. I'm going to grab some of my paints gray, very watered down. And I'm just going to put in the edge of the jar. Can add a little ultramarine to that. And you're just going to play around with filling it in a little bit. So you got the bottom edge and over here, and I water it down, add a little more blue. And this could be the water line. Just go right across where your stems are and pull in some color, pull it down. If it washes in with the, the stems, it's no big deal. You want to kind of leave some white. And then you go up in here and you wash up the rest of the jar. To make it look a little more realistic, I'm going to have to add some darker tones. Um, some deep of the pants gray, maybe a little indigo. Just hitting the bottom edges like so, and the sides. It's a little tricky painting glass with watercolor. Especially if it's wet on wet. I'm going to add some shadows here. You can add a blush rose petal. Just create this color again. It's a little too bright, so I'll take it off. And then you take the gray and just kind of whoosh it around. This is all like trial and error kind of thing. It's kind of how I work. It's kind of how you should work. See, I think that's too blobby. I'll take my paper towel and I'll pat that. Try and get rid of that. playing around. The color, putting in some shadow, dropping in some flying leaves. So I like that wet on wet. And you can do the same thing up here. Just fill in the color unless you want that white space. Drop in color. Get that deep color with the indigo and the hookah screen. I 
just filling it in. Washing in color. Same thing over here. Washing in color. Maybe put another leaf over here. I don't know if you can see that. This is still wet, but I'm going to go back in, grab some of that paint spray and indigo mixed together. Eventually, I want to get like a nice deep line. So it's bleeding there, not liking that. I'm going to have to just let that dry a little bit. Or get more concentrated color so it won't bleed as much. And it's still going to bleed a little bit. And you go and grab some blues. Make it feel like water. If that's too bright. Like I said, wish it out. You can take your paper towel. Play around with it. This is bleeding a little too much. And you go back in and you fix that. But you get the point. You see, you add, you keep adding layers of color and shadow and shade. to get to the effect that you're looking for in the jar. And even here, the leaf. I just keep adding. Just for fun. Until I feel like, oh, I'm satisfied. You know, sometimes we all have that where we add too much. It happens. See, I'm going in and adding more concentrated hookers and indigo and then I can put if I wanted to some veins into the leaves a more jagged edge but the darker next to that blush color it's going to really pop you're going to notice it And you definitely want to change it up with the color tones. You want to be adding in some of that sap green, medium green, you have a touch of brown. It's a little brighter, but that's too bright. So we'll add some brown. Yes, I'm using my brush mixing, but it's fairly wet, so it's okay. If it was dry, do not do that then you are destroying your brush. But today, it's not a big deal. And this is how we create a really pretty, simple, loose, floral blush roses. Um, I'll probably go back in when this dries and add a few more highlights and details. Um, it's still too wet and um, you know when it's wet when it's dry you can just go in and add a little more branches and stuff like that and then a little more shadow down here but you get the idea so I hope you like this tutorial if you did please like share and subscribe thank you so much for stopping by um, I'm getting emails from people asking questions please put them on um, the comments under the video because I'm not going to be going in and answering email questions. Um, that's my work job, unless it's an email about 
you know, um, something specific like purchasing or something like that. But email is basically designated for my regular work. So please put comments, please put questions in the comment box. Um, people ask me what paints I use. Well, I always give the paints and I always tell you in the description box. If they're looking for the brands, there's multiple brands. Like I said before, I've used the Cotton Watercolors. I have just Artist Laugh Watercolors. I have Dick Blick Watercolors. Um, I use Dr. Martin's Watercolors. So it's not one specific brand. I use multiple brands. So I don't use super cheap water. I mean, the cheapest ones I use are um, the Artist Loft and the Cotman watercolors. Um, you can use whole mine, whatever. The more expensive, of course, they're going to be even better. Excuse my dog, he's shaking. Anyway, um, so I give you the list of the colors. Um, I wouldn't recommend really cheap watercolors, cheaper than these ones, because you're really not going to get any good quality. These are probably the cheapest you can find, unless you get really super cheap ones from a dollar store. But, you know, those on up you're good and all those colors that I give you and pretty much all the companies have the same colors they have lizard crimson they have indigo they have Payne's gray they have burnt umber raw umber medium yellow light yellow you know medium red they're all the same it's just the quality of the paint and the more expensive obviously the better quality paint the better vibrancy you're going to get in colors okay I hope that answered your question anyway thank you so much thanks for stopping by have a great day